If you think that we're getting a break from K-pop drama, you're absolutely wrong, and let me tell you why. Shuha accidentally mentioned Sujin in one of her live streams, and Cube deleted it. NCT is getting more hate than ever, and I'm questioning what's the real issue here. And what's more, I gotta tell you about a huge donation by IU for a charity. Keep on watching to find out all the juicy K-pop stuff. Let me start this video with the girls from Blackpink, because they've just achieved something really cool. Blackpink has been appointed as the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals Advocates. The UN has 17 broad goals aiming to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all by 2030. This includes various issues that the world is currently facing, such as poverty, inequality, climate change, environmental degradation, peace, and injustice. It's the second time that Blackpink as a group have been appointed as advocates for the United Nations. Earlier this year, they had the honor to become advocates for the United Nations Climate Change Conference. What can I say? Congrats to these girls! But Blackpink isn't the only group that's been appointed by the United Nations to raise awareness about these issues. BTS are also ready to join the force with the UN and apparently changed the world for the better. On September 20th, the group will attend the 76th United Nations General Assembly in New York. They will deliver a speech and also perform. When the boys arrived at the airport, fans went kind of crazy because it's been such a long time since they saw BTS in their airport fashion. Well, they looked better than ever. Okay, before I get into this one, how many Agases do we have here? Tell me I'm not the only one who still loves GOT7. Like damn, those boys are doing so good for themselves and now we've got a new announcement that says that Yongjae is having his independent solo debut. The name of his album will be Colors From Ours, and it's set to get released on October 5th. Another release you guys can get ready for is CL's next single for her album, Alpha, that's titled Lover Like Me. It's gonna be out on September 29th, and her first full-length solo album is set to come out in early October. Looks like October 2021 is gonna be a great month for K-pop. IU isn't called the generous queen for no reason, and she's once again proving that she didn't forget her humble beginnings because she keeps helping the less fortunate. As a way of celebrating her 13th anniversary of her debut, I Ayu decided that she would donate money and goods to various organizations and charities. These donations were made through the brands she's endorsed. New Music News reported that this included 1,000 pairs of New Balance sneakers and 2,000 boxes of pizzas for children and teenagers living in shelters. Ayu also supplied winter coats and gear for the youths, as well as first aid kits, blankets, and bedding sets to health centers. All of the gifts are worth over $700,000, and Edam Entertainment shared that Ayu will be paying half the price of all of it. The statement reads, Ayu proposed the offer to each brand, and Ayu will also be personally contributing for half of the cost of the goods. That means that Ayu will pay more than $350,000 out of her own pocket. Who's doing it like her? She's truly a one-of-a-kind celebrity, and I can't help myself but admire her. Of course, this isn't the first time that Ayu donated so many goods to charities, but this is probably her biggest donation yet. And although I'd love to talk only about some positive news today, I think it's time to look at something a bit more saddening. I guess you'll find out what I mean in a second. NCT is back with their album, Sticker, and before its release, fans were super excited excited because, hey, it's NCT. However, when the title song dropped, people suddenly seemed to change their mind and look pretty disappointed with what they got. There are fans claiming that the song is straight up terrible and that it's even hard to listen to it. Others are saying that although the title song is bad, the rest of the album is good, or great even. All the negativity around the song doesn't align with the views and the streams it's been getting, so it leaves you wondering. Is this another case of SM artists getting hate for no reason whatsoever? Like when Espa released Next Level and everybody jumped on the hate wagon just because it was an Espa song? but a week later you couldn't scroll down your page on TikTok because it was literally used in every video? When it comes to the reviews of Sticker, a line from K-pop hit says it low-key the best. Without a doubt, Sticker is an interesting song. I don't know what I was expecting for this release, but I honestly did not expect this. But even in this review, as in many others, people have pointed out that the flute instrumental in the song is what makes it sound so weird. I have to agree, it's not my favorite release by NCT, but it's far from being as bad as everybody says it is. I think that there are songs that highlight the group's dancing skills, their rap, skills, and then there are songs that draw attention to their singing abilities, and I believe that Sticker is really just that. One fan on Twitter wrote, Sticker really highlight their vocal skills. I believe it challenges them in a way they never did before, and the result is amazing. You love it or you hate it. Sticker is all about vocals. All NCT 127 members are talented singers. And as I said earlier, the song has been getting so many views in such a short period of time that it's hard to call it a flop. Like, if you're calling a flop something that got 1 million views in 21 minutes, then well, I guess we've all got a different definition of what flop really is. The actual music video of the song is really amazing though. We've got to see the group as wild futuristic cowboys with a lot of bright neon colors around. I mean, come on, we've got to give it to them and really admit that the music video was produced perfectly, plus you can really see the amount of work that was put into it by the members too. The album itself has reached a huge milestone because it became the third album with the highest first day sales on the Han Teo chart. BTS hold the first place and 17 are also ahead of NCT 127, but this is an amazing 
achievement anyways. And I can't forget to mention that the song jumped to number one on various Korean music charts, so it looks like the boys are doing great. What's actually really funny is that Suman, who's the CEO of SM, appeared in NCT's TikTok video. Let me tell you that I was shook when I saw that. Mark and Haechan were doing the sticker challenge and Suman jumped in to do his own thing. Some find it cringy, others say it was hilarious, and there are also those who are left with a TF face. And I think it was all of it combined. Simply entertaining. And now to the last topic. Suhua from Idol has attracted a lot of attention lately for what she said in one of her live streams. And trust me, when I say that this news is juicy, I I freaking mean it. Cube even had to delete the original live stream and then upload it with parts cut out. But let's take it step by step and discuss what really went down in this infamous live stream of Shuha and why it made everyone gag. I'm pretty sure that you're all aware of the messy situation that the girls of Idol have found themselves in earlier this year and especially a few weeks ago when it was officially announced that Sujin left the group. Allegedly on her own, but hey, we all know how it goes. So the rumor has it that she was kicked out of the group and fans have kept pointing out that it must be true because there's no way that Shuha or Soyeon or any other member would just let her go like that. They freaking loved her. And that's how we get into the Shuha controversy. When she held her live stream, she was just talking about her members and, you know, the basics. But she seemed very gentle and her voice was super soft. She could have been tired, but at one point she started talking and said, Su, then stopped because she realized she can't mention Sujin. <laughs> After she almost said Sujin's name, there was about a seven second break during which Shuhua seemed kind of emotional, but that might have just been my observation. She rolled her eyes as if she tried to push back her emotions and then scratched her face so it would look as natural as possible. To cover the fact that she almost said Sujin, Shuhua changed it to Soyeon, but no one was buying it because it was so obvious that she wanted to say something about Sujin. This prompted fans to say that she's for sure still in touch with Sujin and that probably goes for the other members as well. This I find totally understandable because they've been together for so long and it's not easy to cut ties with someone that your company suddenly sees as an enemy, number one. The reaction of Cube Entertainment was, as usual, absolutely ridiculous. When the live ended, they deleted it from the platform and uploaded it again later, but this time with a little change. The part where Shuhua mentioned Sujin got cut out and they made it look like she said Soyeon only. The decision of Cube made fans visibly angry, but many of Idol stands got super emotional after watching the live. One fan on Twitter said, the fact that they removed the part where Shuhua almost said Sujin is scary. Cube really wants nothing to do with her anymore. I doubt they're even supporting her case if they can't even leave Su in. I hope she can at least clear her name even without Q backing her. Another angered fan wrote, crying because Shuha almost said Su Jin's name but she couldn't so she said Soyeon instead. Cube deleted her live and edited this part out. Cube. Even those who are still pretty optimistic about the whole idol situation have decided that enough was enough and realized that something about Sujin's departure isn't right. I honestly hope that we can get a proper closure on this whole story and that idol has a bright future ahead as a full group. What's your opinion about what's gone down with idol so far? And do you think that there's a chance that the rest of the group will follow in Sujin's footsteps and leave Cube? Thanks for watching and bye!